Hi everyone, welcome to this tutorial on designing a 3D printable model of a wrench using Tinkercad. Clicking on this logo will take us to the Tinkercad homepage. And since we want to create a new model, we will click this button which says create new design. Once you click this button, a new project is going to open up and what you see in front of you right now is the Tinkercad interface. We will now go through every individual part of the interface separately and we will explain the functionality of each of these parts to you. The most important part of the interface is the blue works plane which sits in the middle. Now you can think of this work plane like a 3D analog of, a, of the 2D canvas that you see in Photoshop or GIMP. So if you are designing a, a 2D graphic, then you would be working on a 2D canvas on Photoshop and GIMP. Similarly, to design 3D models, we work on the work plane. Now this work plane, you can change the perspective and in order to do that just click on your right mouse button and while the button is clicked drag the mouse and as you do it you will see that your perspective of the work plane changes and you can view the work plane from many different angles you can view it from the bottom you can view it from the top or you can view it at an angle you can also zoom in and out of the work plane. In order to zoom in, just scroll up on your mouse and this will zoom in the work plane. And if you scroll down with your mouse, then this will zoom out. The next most important part of the Tinkercad interface is the panel of basic shapes that you see on the right hand side. For example, we see that this panel contains a box, a cylinder, a pyramid, a roof, basically basic geometric shapes. But basic geometric shapes is not the only thing that is present in this panel. If you use this drop down menu and you change the section to text, then you will see 3D letter based shapes like letters from the English alphabet, or you also have numbers. Similarly, if you go to the section on symbols, then you have 3D models of symbols like exclamation mark, question marks, etc. And these shapes basically form the basic building block of anything that we will design on Tinkercad. The next part of the interface that we will inspect are the menus. And Tinkercad has two main menus that appear on this top, pa top panel over here. There's one menu which is present on the right hand side of the interface. And this menu contains the basic operations, basic 3D operations that we need to perform in order to build models. For example, you have a button for grouping different 3D objects for ungrouping different 3D objects, for aligning two or more objects, or for flipping objects. We also have a menu on the left-hand side, and this menu is the more conventional menu, which has buttons for copying, pasting, duplicating, or deleting objects. These four things, the work plane, the panel of shapes, the menu on the right hand side and the menu on the left hand side, these form the main components of the Tinkercad interface. And we will learn how to use these different components to build 3D models in the subsequent parts of this tutorial. But before we begin, we need to tell you about a very important principle of 3D modeling. And this principle is called divide and conquer. This principle says that in order to model a complicated 3D object, we should first divide that object into simple geometric pieces and then design those pieces individually. 
Then in a final step, we should combine those individual pieces to create the more complicated object. To give an example of what we mean by this, if you want to design a wrench, which looks like the image that you see on the screen right now, we will divide this complicated object into three simple parts. The ring, which sits at one end of the wrench, the long extended handle in the middle, and the workhorse of the wrench, which is the jaw, which sits at another end of the wrench. The way we will design the wrench will involve designing these individual pieces separately. And then in one final step, we will put them together to create the model of the wrench. In this part of the video, we will be designing just the ring. And if you look at the ring, the ring can be approximated by a circular disc with a circular hole in the middle. Of course, in this image, you can also see that the interior of the ring is wedged. But since we are going to create an approximate model of the wrench, we will not have wedges. We will create a very simple ring, which is just a circular disc with a circular hole in the middle. Let's see how we can do that using Tinkercad. The first thing we will do is to figure out a shape from the basic shapes panel, which will help us create the first circular disc. And as you can see that this cylinder is more or less like a very extended disc. So if we could compress the height, if we could reduce the height of this cylinder down, then maybe it will start looking like a disc. So let's see whether we can create a disc out of the cylinder. The way to use the cylinder is to simply left click on your mouse. This will select the cylinder and then using your mouse, drag it onto the work plane. And voila, you have the cylinder sitting on the work plane. To look at the cylinder from another angle, simply right click your mouse button and then drag to change the perspective as we discussed in part one of this tutorial. Now we want the disc to have a certain size. In our case, we want the disc to have a diameter of 25 millimeters and a height of four millimeters. The way we can change the dimensions of the cylinder is by using these four white square handles on the plane and the one white square handle on the top of the cylinder. And the ones on the plane, they change the dimensions on the plane and the one on top of the cylinder can be used to change the height of the cylinder. So we want the cylinder to have a diameter of 25 millimeters. So I will simply drag this till it has 25 millimeters as length and breadth. And as you can see right now, it has 25 millimeters as both length and breadth. So I will stop here. We want the height to be four millimeters, but right now it is 20 millimeters. So I will just click, left click on the top white handle and then just drag it down till the height becomes four millimeters. There you go. Now we have a perfect disc sitting on the work plane, but we also need to create a hole in the center of this disc, right? So how do we create a hole? Now the idea of Tinkercad is something called Boolean design, which means that using Tinkercad, we will be able to join two different shapes together and also subtract one shape from another shape to create hollow areas or holes. And I'll show you how this works. So to create a circular hole inside this disc, we will also need another disc-like shape. And for this reason, we will drag another cylinder into the work plane. Now we want the hole to have a diameter of, let's say, 20 millimeters. So then using the same method as we saw before, we can adjust the length and the width of the cylinder till it reaches 20 millimeters on both sides. And there you go, it's 20 on both sides. Now we need to 
convert this cylinder into a hole and the way to do that is to first select the cylinder by simply left clicking on it and when it is selected you will see this blue outline around the cylinder and while it is selected press the hole option and when you press the hole option the cylinder now converts into a hole which means we are it is ready to be subtracted out from some other shape in the work plane. We want to create a circular hole in the middle of the orange disc, right? So we will need to place this cylinder shaped hole in the middle of our circular disc. And then we need to subtract out the hole. The way to place the cylinder shaped hole in the circular disc is by aligning these two objects so that one sits right in the middle of another. And the way aligning works on Tinkercad, you first select the first object by simply left clicking on it. And then with the shift button pressed, select the other object, which you want the first object to align with. And if you do this successfully, remember, press the shift button and then select the other object then both objects will be highlighted simultaneously. And you will see that several options on the top right menu will now become activated. And one of these options is Align. So let's press it. The moment we press Align, we see these black guides appear on the work plane. And this guide in the center says that if you press this, I'm going to align the two shapes so that they align in this line. So let's do that. And as you can see that these two shapes have now aligned in this straight line. But we also want to align them along this dimension, right? So we will press this alignment guide and this will finally bring the hole, the cylinder shaped hole in the middle of the circular disc. Can you see it? It's sitting right in the middle. And now they're both selected. So we need to somehow subtract the cylinder shaped hole from the disc. And the way we will do it is by pressing the group option. And the moment we press the group option, Tinkercad is going to try to add the two shapes together to create a combined shape. And when one of the shapes is a hole, you will basically see a hole forming. And as we, as we just did, you know, by grouping the cylinder shaped hole and the circular disc, we have created the ring of the wrench that we want to finally create. The handle of the wrench is essentially a long rectangular slab. So therefore, to create the handle, we will choose a box-like shape. And therefore, let's drag a box into the work plane. And let's change the perspective of the work plane so that we can see the box a little better. We want the handle to be to be quite long. So we want the, the length of the handle to be 100 millimeters. So let's drag this till the length becomes 100 millimeters. There you go. Okay, now 101. Let's, yeah, there it is. 100 millimeters. We want the, the width to be 10 millimeters. And right now, as you can see, it's 20, right? It's 20. So we will reduce it such that it is 10 millimeters. Very good. Finally, since the height of the ring was four millimeters, we will match the height of the handle with the height of the ring. And therefore we will use the white handle on the top and drag it down till the height of the handle becomes four millimeters. And there it is. With only a little bit of work, we now have the handle as well on the work plane. As you can see, the jaw can be approximated by a disc, a circular disc with a near polygonal shape carved out on at, on one of its sides. So let's see how, how we can recreate that shape using Tinkercad. 
of course we will need to first create a disk and uh, therefore we drag a cylinder into the work plane and we we drag the handles on the plane such that its diameter becomes 30 millimeters to match the height of the other parts we adjust the height of the disc to 4 millimeters now in order to create the uh, this shape in the middle of the disc we will drag a polygonal shape and then put it in the work plane and since this shape needs to be carved out of the jaw we will convert the polygon into a hole uh, a wrench like it's it's used to tighten nuts and bolts and depending on the dimension of the nuts and bolts the hole in the jaw can have different diameters or different fits in in this particular case we will use a width of 15 millimeters and uh, we will also increase the uh, the length of the whole shape so that it can cover uh, so that it extends out of the, of the of the disc and with hole created like this we will now move it into the disc and then align it by selecting the two objects together pressing the align button and hitting the middle alignment guide to ensure that the hole is exactly aligned in the middle of the disc and with these two shapes aligned, well, now we simply hit the group button to get the polygonal shape carved out of the disc. And this creates the jaw of the wrench. In this part of the tutorial, we are going to put these individual parts together to create the finished wrench. We will start by combining the ring and the handle and we will merge it together to create one continuous unit. Now in order to do that, we will first select the jaw and then drag it out of the way. Next, we will, we will position the, the handle and the ring so that they're more or less in one straight line. And then we will drag the ring so that the handle goes a little bit inside the body of the ring. As you can see here, if I, if I zoom in, you will be able to see this better. See a little bit of the handle is protruding inside the body of the ring. This ensures that when we combine these two shapes together, the merge shape will look like one entity and will not look like two entities put together with some gaps in the middle. Uh, with this configuration, we need to ensure that the, the handle and the ring are aligned properly. So in order to align the handle and the ring, we follow the procedure that we learned in part two. So we press the shift button and select the two objects together. And then we hit the align button and then the alignment guides appear. And since we want to align these two so that they are in a straight line, we hit this alignment handle and this ensures that the ring and the handle are now aligned perfectly. Once these two objects are aligned perfectly, we are now in a position to add them together to form one combined shape. Press the group button and the moment we press the group button, the two shapes are now combined together, grouped together to form a merged entity consisting of the handle and the ring. So now we need to attach the jaw with this merged unit. But we notice that the, the jaw is basically facing the same direction as the handle. But we want the jaw to be at a slight angle to the handle and therefore we use the rotational functionality of Tinkercad to rotate our jaw a tiny bit before we merge it with the handle. So in, or so in order to rotate the jaw, we will use one of these rotational handles and using these handles, we will be able to rotate the jaw in the plane. For example, see how it rotates the jaw and yeah, we will, we will go with a 22.5 degree angle. That, that looks pretty good. 
And let's now try to try to put this together. So with the jaw rotated, we will drag the jaw and again, using the same principle, we will ensure that the, the handle is slightly protruding inside the body of the jaw so that when we combine the two shapes together, then it looks like one entity. And yeah, this looks, this looks quite nice. So then let's align this merged entity with the jaw. So procedure is the same, shift select both of them and then press the align button and then align them by hitting the alignment handle. Once they're perfectly aligned, then we hit the group button to merge them to create the finished wrench. However, the wrench, while it's finished, is still orange and like, who uses an orange wrench, right? A wrench should be, in my opinion, gray. And that's how all wrenches are. See, see this wrench, it's, it's kind of gray, right? So we will also turn this wrench into a gray color. Notice that when we merge the different parts together, they took on the same color, which is orange. Initially, there was one orange piece, there was one red piece, but when you merge them together, they, they take on the same color. And now with this entire range selected, the way to change the color is to hit the solid button and then the color options appear. And then we are gonna choose a, a dark shade of gray. And here it is. And voila, they have a gray, beautiful wrench sitting in the work plane. So there you go. We have been able to create a 3D model of a wrench using Tinkercad. And you can now 3D print this model that you created yourself. Isn't that, isn't that really cool? Thanks for watching. We'll see you some other time. Bye-bye.